All right, what's going on everyone? So this is gonna be a video on the flash technology FTB205. This is a high intensity obstruction light. Um, typically these lights are mounted, uh, I think around over 700 feet in groups of three or four, depending on the circumference of the structure. Uh, this is the FTB205-10. Uh, the newer version, the 11, the biggest difference between those two the 10 and 11 is, uh, the 11 comes standard with Eagle Smart. Uh, this thing, if you want Eagle Smart diagnostics, you have to upgrade the uh, timing and trigger board. Um, this light fixture weighs 80 pounds. Uh, it's a little bit bigger than the 125s. Uh, actually, let me get a little ways back so you can see the size difference. So, it's a little bit bigger. Actually, the light output is a little bit more than the 125s at uh, 270,000 candela. Uh, the 125s are 200 on the dot. Um, here's the manual for it, current manual right now, well this is technically for the 11 but it comes comes with the uh, 10 as well, uh, I printed this off though, but uh, I do recommend that for anyone. Uh, real quick, here's the flash tube that it uses, it is an external triggered arc flash tube, it's a high performance quart, or quartz arc lens, or lens uh, tube, my bad. So there's what it looks like. Hopefully my camera will focus on it. Yep, there we go. So there it is. There's the part number for anyone who wants to get it. Um, I actually bought mine off eBay. It was 138 bucks, which is very cheap for a flash tube of that size. Come on, focus on me. There we go. All right. So let's go ahead and get into this thing. Um, so here it is. Here's the insides. A uh, little wobbly. I built a little stand for it and it's a little uneven, but not, nothing. It's not going to tip over or anything like that. But there's the insides. Um, you have your fuse block right there. Uh, you can see I have one fuse right there. Uh, it says you only need one. Uh, if you were running over, I think, 240, you would need two fuses. And it says I only need one interlock, but it runs fine just on with both of them. But here's your interlock uh, power transformer. Uh, I believe that's the burst choke, I think. Um, that's the current sense right there. Uh, this is your twilight relay. That's your interlock relay. These are 24 volt relays, these two right here. That's your day relay. So these are 24 volt relays, and that's a 120 volt relay. And I believe that's an induction transformer. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, there's a couple of resistors, well, four resistors. Um, terminal block, I believe that's where your sink in and your con uh, configure or confirmation goes out, I believe. Um, capacitor bank, that's your load tuning capacitor. Day time capacitors right there. Twilight and night. Now I'm supposed to have another capacitor, at least that's what the manual calls for for twilight, but I don't have one in there. Uh, there's your timing and trigger board. And you can see all the leads coming off of it and which, what each of them says. And then you have your high voltage rectifier board. And that's it, really. I mean, there's really nothing else to it. And then on this side, on the panel with the flash tube and all that in there, you have your trigger transformer and your leads, which I'll actually take the cover off here in a minute. Now, for anyone who has one of these and does not have a controller, I'm going to show you how to change the intensities on these things without a controller. And uh, one downside with this, with not having the Eagle Smart technology, is you can use, or with Eagle Smart, you can use the handheld controller which would be like a little port up here that you can plug in the controller to and then you can change the intensities using that. Unfortunately, I do not have that, so I have to manually tap the factory test points, which for this will go into night mode, the lowest intensity. All right, and we're set for night mode, so let's plug this thing in. I got mine wired for 120, but you can wire it for 120, 208, 240, and 480. So we'll pull these out. Let's go do a startup procedure. And there it goes. So there's night mode. 2000 Candela. Man, I love that sound. Alright, now another difference between uh, the 
205 and the 204 is the 204 has everything located in a separate controller. So you have basically everything you see in here would be in a separate box and then the flash tube and the trigger transfer would be in its own little enclosure. Uh, most smokestacks actually use the um, different controller, the 204, than the 205 because if they have to do maintenance on it, they don't actually have to go on the outside of the stack to do it. I mean, they can. most of your smokestacks have a little door that opens up inward, and then that's how they change the flash tube without having to go on the outside. So I better wait for the high voltage to go out. I've already done it before with changing the intensities. And there it is. We'll switch it to twilight. Now, if anything, that's a 24 volt circuit right there that I'm completing, so I'm not really in any danger of electrocuting myself unless I touch anything on this board here or any of the points here. And this uh, board is also uh, covered in plastic, and you can see it right there. One of my little LEDs uh, snapped off for sync, and you can see the actual plastic sheeting right there. Now, Twilight on my beacon, Twilight's a little weird. Uh, the transformer actually starts making a weird humming sound. Not not like you just heard with Night. It actually sounds a lot stranger, I'll say. And I ran Twilight for about five minutes one day, and it had a burning smell coming out. Like, I don't know where it was coming from. I, I don't know. Um, so we'll go ahead and fire it up. I don't run it too long in Twilight anyway. And Twilight does not have a relay, too. So it's just going to automatically switch over. You can kind of hear that sound I'm talking about. Here's Twilight. Twilight is 20,000 Candela, which is the same as these dual medium intensities right here. The flash guard and the flash tech. So there's that. Yeah, you can definitely hear it now. So we'll shut that off. All right. Now for day mode, we do not need to use the test points because this beacon will automatically go back into day mode without uh, interference. Oh, another thing, I took this here, uh, cover off so you can see the fuse block. Um, so high voltage is almost completely extinguished. And there it is. All right, so we'll go ahead and pop these here test points off. Set that there and power it on. All right, there's day mode. 270,000 condel. Ooh, that just got me. Ooh. This thing is bright. It's probably not showing up on camera, but it is extremely bright. Like, I'm about, oh, about five feet away from it right now, and I can feel the heat coming off of it, no problem. I have to look at my phone screen because it's at least being a barrier for the light. <laughs> but I'll shut up and let y'all listen to it. Now that is the FTB 205. Um, real quick, let me put this here fuse block cover back on because I'll, well actually I won't, I'll probably for, won't forget it. The high voltage lights are almost completely out. And we'll take off this here panel for the actual flash tube. There we go. All right. So this is actually kind of a unique thing that only this beacon has. Well, I think the FTB-204s do it as well, and so does the 207s and 208s. But no other beacons out there do this. Alright, so if you take off this here panel, right here, it exposes this. And this is what actually holds the flash tube clips and the trigger lead. So you can see. Your trigger lead coming off your trigger transformer comes right there and then to that ceramic post which then you tie into the windings that go around the flash tube and there's the flash tube right there. And then your 
uh, wires coming from your transformer go to that point there and then to the clips right there. So this whole plate from right there all the way down is charged. Uh, negative, I believe, uh, negative 600 volts DC. And they are insulated via these ceramic uh, tabs right there. And there's one there, and there's one right there. And I believe that's all that will put the camera up there and actually look up. Oh, no, there's another one. Okay. So there's three ceramic posts, and this is for both ends, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. And that's actually what happened, or that's how it works. Um, so, let me reassemble this thing back again. Funny story, actually. Um, I bought this light used off eBay, and it was dirt cheap. I'm using my phone to actually nudge this clip back on. But I bought this light dirt cheap off eBay. This light was $457, I believe. And the reason why it was so cheap was because it was untested, and... Uh, that's honestly kind of a big risk you have to take with buying these fixtures because they're too scared to plug them in or they don't want to. And when I got it, the reflector that goes on the inside was curved out like they had pulled it directly behind the flash tube. Like you can see how there's like about an inch gap right there. They had pulled that uh, reflector just about a half inch away. You cannot see that opening there where the flash tube comes out of it. You cannot see that. And they had uh, pre-cut plywood strips that fit perfectly in between these little bars right there, 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 and there. And it had focused the light, I assume, more. And with them doing that, they had taken this sheet of glass so that's right here. They had taken that out, and there was no glass in this beacon. Um, so that being said, since the reflector was bowed out more, you can see the components whenever the door was shut. So I know whatever could have possibly got into this beacon was in there. Um, there was packing peanuts and foam and all this other crap from the packaging. Actually, there's the box right there for it. And, uh, yeah, it was just a mess. Honestly, I could have sworn this thing was not going to work. I figured I was going to have to replace something in there. Um, or at the least have to reconfigure the transformer for 120. But, uh, anyway, that's the look inside of the FTB 205-10. There's the plate right there for it. If you guys have absolutely any questions, let me know. Um, if you have any questions on any of my other lights, which are only a few of them, there's the 125s, the FH-306s, the uh, Flashcard 3000, which I already did the video on. Anyway, if you guys have any more questions, let me know, and I'll be more than happy to answer them. Uh, anyway, thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.